does sum up a lot of Christianity today. A lot of folks want Jesus Christ, but very few are willing to work in the fields. Many want Jesus Christ to fix their problems. Many want Jesus Christ to be their friend. Many people want Jesus Christ for a lot of things. Jesus Christ has called Christians to work with him. To love brethren. We even seen it this morning in our service, uh, in the message this morning, that he wants us to work with him and reach others. Amen. That's why we're here. We're not here to make this world our kingdom. The kingdom of heaven is what we're waiting for. Right. Amen. Which goes along with the message today. This the Lord knows. We've been going through the book of Matthew verse by verse. It's not like I planned this a year ago. This has come up today because of the need. And it's next in our scripture. Didn't take it. It's what we preach next in context. As we get into March, we're really starting to push forward with our outreach to the church. Enjoyed services this morning. We broke 40. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. That's a big deal. I'm ready to I'm ready to see us breaking 50. Amen. Amen. And 60. And then widening the building. Amen. Amen. It's coming. If we'll plan on it, God will do it. God didn't send us here not to continue to grow. Amen. Amen. You'll open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 13. We're going to continue in our in our study in the book of the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter number 13. We're at the end of the chapter, but the context today goes, of course, it always goes together, but it's going to fit in with what we've already preached, what I've already preached and taught, and I want you to, I want you to really open up your mind and see what Jesus is trying to teach his disciples here. You could grab this portion of scripture and preach it a lot of ways, and it'd be fine, and there's a lot of uh, topic there you can visit with, and a lot of things we can learn from it. But God has a specific purpose for the text, and that's why we want to be in that. I love I love preaching Friend Day. I love preaching uh, uh, Love My Church Sundays. I love preaching those things. But what I really love is just getting into the context of what Jesus Christ has for us, what the Word of God is teaching us there, that undergirding. They call it an exegete, which is why is it there? And it's there to teach us. Amen? Matthew chapter number 13. If you are able to stand for God's word, please, in honor of it. Matthew chapter number 13, verse number 44 is where we'll start. Matthew chapter 13, verse 44, the Bible says, again, just by one word here, we know there's context with what has followed prior is going to come after. Again, so he's saying again, let me teach you something. Again, the kingdom of heaven, so there's our key, the kingdom of heaven. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like, typology, is like unto treasure hid in a field. The which, when, the which when a man hath found, he hideth, and for joy therefore uh, thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. You ever sold out and bought something? Amen. Is worth selling out for. Verse 45, again, so we're seeing this goes with what was prior. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls. <coughs> pearls are beautiful, aren't they? Real ones. Who, when he had found one pearl, one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, so we're seeing this flows in context here. Again, the kingdom of heaven is likened to a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind, which, when it was full, they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into uh, vessels, but cast the bad away. So shall it be at the end of the world, the angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from the just. And shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Jesus said unto them, Have ye understood all these things? 
The disciples said this. They said unto him, Yea, Lord. They understood. Verse 52, he says, Then, then saith he unto them, Therefore every scribe, scribe is someone who handles the word of God, Therefore every scribe which is instructed into or unto the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man that is a householder, which bringeth forth out of his treasure things new and things old. I want to preach to you this evening on a very important top, uh, very important title. Sold out Christians. Sold out Christians. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for the day. Thank you for the blessings that you give to us. We are thankful to be in your house. Lord, I ask you to bless the preaching. Lord, I need you. Help us to see Bible truth here this evening. Help us see the context. And Lord, help us to not be in a hurry, but to really see what you're teaching us here. We love you, Lord. Bless the service, please. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. studying the Word of God. Let me be honest. It's work. I love preaching the Word of God even more. Because then the work's done and you get to enjoy what you've studied. This text has beat me up. Um, since I started it this week. Got a lot of hours in this text. And I'm just telling you as a pastor. This text is um, needed my help. Amen? Amen. The Lord knows who's here today. And I just ask that you kind of flow. We're going to do some teaching with this, but I want, to, I want you to see what God is trying to tell us here. So to do that, we need to recap just a little bit for our understanding here. Last, last lesson was sabotage. We know of sabotage for the Christian life. Can I tell you, Satan wants to sabotage your life. Amen? Can I tell you, Satan wants to sabotage uh, the church. You shouldn't be surprised. Um, he wants to sab sabotage ministry. I uh, had a preacher's meeting last week, uh, last Tuesday, last week, and I was one of the preachers there, and I preached this, that message, which you've all heard, but from a ministry stand standpoint. As a pastor, we need to understand that Satan would love nothing more than to wreck the house of God. He would love to do that. So as we think of sabotage there, and then we look at the parables that we've dealt with even before this. Remember there was four kind of hearers. Uh, the sower goes forth to sow, and we had four different kind of hearers there. We had, we seen three to one odds. Three didn't get it. Three of them did not produce fruit at all. Three of them went on their, their own ways. Uh, they were either uh, too worried about themselves or worried about what they were going to get, or they just didn't even listen at all. So they didn't produce any fruit for God at all. But there was the one here that did hear and did listen to uh, the, the preaching of the Word of God, the, what God had to say in His Word, and through their Bible reading, things like that, we were sowing the Word of God. We need to talk about the gospel message being thrown, sown there. And we can say out of 100% that was thrown, that was sowed out there, 25% of that produced. The rest did not. They all went back to their own. And that's just what I've sown. We say 100%. That's not 100% of the world. That's just 100% of what was planted. Right. Amen. What was sown out there. And then that 25% goes, gets under attack by, by Satan. He tries to sabotage that 25% that actually want to do something for God that could produce. So Satan goes to, uh, listen, those other three that didn't listen, didn't hear, didn't produce anything, Satan doesn't really have to attack them too much. They're already on their own. And it doesn't make any sense, right? But those 25% that do hear, Satan goes to work on them. He tries to plant tares, amen, in with the wheat. As we know, the Christian would be the wheat here. Satan, he attacks personal lives, and he attacks, he attacks churches. So it not, we ought not be surprised, but that's what happens. So... The next parable deals again with that with that uh, that twenty five percent there. He mixed tares in there, tares in with the wheat, and what tares are are they're, they they look just like wheat until they open up. Amen. Boy, they were, anybody had to have somebody ever been around? Them? They're just like me. They love me. They're great with me, and then the truth comes out. Amen. You ever you ever had that happen in your life? Now I see who you really are. Amen. We've we've seen those things. Anybody? 
been with somebody for quite some time and then and then then the truth comes out and you see who they really are. Yeah. Well, that's never fun. Yeah. Satan's really good with that with Christian lives. Bring in somebody that's gonna walk along with you, somebody's gonna uh, might show up to a church and, and, and come to a church setting, and boy, they really just look at look like Christians until things open up. Now we're not talking about new Christians that need to grow. I mean, there, there are lots of folks that need to grow in Christianity, and, and we all got to start somewhere. Praise the Lord for those. Amen? But these are ones Satan has introduced into your life. Satan has introduced into a church, and by the time they open up, now they're interwoven so much, they're going to cause damage just trying to get rid of it. Amen? Mm. Many churches have split because of those, those types of things. Many Christians have left the, 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 the work of God, the church of God, because of an influence, an outside influence. Maybe here we're seeing an inside influence. Somebody you let on the inside. Listen, I'm thankful for Friend Day here, and I'm thankful that we had a good amount of people here, and we have a good amount of people here tonight. But you need to understand that Satan, if he could stop you from serving God, he would do it, and he'll bring somebody in, and it doesn't seem fair, but that's a great way to get somebody out of church. Yeah. Amen? Amen? It happens. It's stop a work right in his tracks to introduce some, some tears and it'll split a church. So we know that they're counterfeits is what they are, is, is the technical word for that. They like to talk like a Christian, but when it opens up, you really see what's inside there. They're not what they claim to be. And it's really a negative message, but it happens all the time. Listen, the world is not getting better and better. Right. Christianity is not getting better and better. And we know Satan has been having his way there. And I know that's a negative thing, but we have to deal with the negative too, do we not? Yeah. Sure, I'm not going to jump over it. And I know you don't expect me to jump over it. And I know if I did, some people here would throw me out. Amen? Yeah. Amen? And you should. But the next parable teaches us along with those tares. It kind of goes into a, uh, into, a, uh, into a little bit deeper understanding of those tares, these Christians that would be false. Uh, he gives the idea of a mustard seed. Look at verse number 31, chapter number uh, 13. Look at verse 31 where we see the words, And another parable he, he put forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, and indeed the least of all seeds. But when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs, and it becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. Now, what we see here is a mustard seed does not grow into a tree. It grows into a bush. So we need to understand the context there is negative, right? So we have abnormal growth. Have you ever have seen somebody that's growing like, you're just not growing, you're growing, but not right. Amen. Things aren't right there, right? So we see something that's wrong there. So we have an abnormal growth, but you see it on the outside. You can see some things there. And you might try, the pastor may try to warn them, listen, you're headed in a direction that, that wouldn't be right there. In verse number 33, we also see uh, the kingdom of heaven is like an unto. We see here that there's an, an uh, a, a woman who's sown leaven into the lump. And we understand that leaven will get in on the inside, that evil sin, and work its way to the outside. Amen. So we see an abnormal growth with the mustard seed on the outside. But this we have abnormal growth on the inside. Amen. Working its way out. So those are some ways that Satan would plant tares. Amen. Amen. Plant tears in there, may even hinder your life, and those things do happen. And I know that's really a negative thing. We're like, man, I'm not having fun at church, church here tonight. But these are things you need to know. And Christ is teaching his disciples that because it happens. This is hurting Christian lives in our day. It false makes uh, false makes itself into a church. False will make itself into a personal life, and, and then it will start encouraging compromise. Hey, stay with me here tonight. Before you know it, something will enter in your life and say, hey, you need to compromise the things of God for the things of the world. Satan is the, is the ruler of this world, is he not? Amen. Now, I know Jesus Christ is the creator, and I understand that. But Satan tried to offer Jesus Christ what? Things of this world. Amen? Amen. Before you know it, that will enter in on the inside. Before you know it, they'll try to compromise. Can I tell you, it'll change. Maybe we need to change the church and add a few things that would be, well, you know... A little different on the inside so we can bring the outside come on are you with me we'll change a few things in, in, in your church or maybe a few things in your life and you're just going to compromise a little bit well that compromise before you know it will contaminate everything right and then it'll do it in our personal lives also so jesus christ is warning us here and warning his disciples that this happens and we don't we just don't want that we don't we don't we don't want to compromise the things of god we want to stand firm for the things of god we want to be weak not tear amen Right. 
And then growing uh, that, com that condemnation or, or, or compromise will bring contaminating. And we'll see it on the outside and we'll also see it on the inside. The way folks act on the outside of church, we say it that way, and then on the inside. You'll see some things happen there. But we need to understand that Jesus Christ here is teaching them about reaching people. Remember the multitudes were, were coming into uh, chapter number 13, chapter number 12. So we take a step further back. And why is Jesus teaching this? Why? Because there is a real war going on out there for souls. Sure. Right. Satan is trying to stop you from reaching anyone else for him. Yep. Amen. If he could stop Lighthouse Baptist Church, he'd be entering a few tears. He'd try to bring some people out. Amen. I, I'm not trying to be negative. I'm just telling you that's a tactic. Sure. And yep. I love what's going on around here. I love seeing people moved by the Word of God. I love people growing in the Word of God. I love people getting saved. And we're going to baptize two more, which is not salvation. Amen. It's right. growing in the church. Amen. And I'm thankful for that. Boy, it's exciting things going on there. But I'm telling you, Satan does not like it. Right. We're at war with him. Amen? Amen. 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 We're at war with Satan. But there really is a war going on there. In the end, God will deal with the counterfeits. Amen? He will. So he did all of that to get to our text. All right? I know that it sounds negative. And it is. It's not. If Satan's attacking you, I don't think, well, that's great. <laughs> Woo! I love it when Satan attacks. Right. Of course not. That's right. ridiculous. All right? Right. But we need to know what happened. It's kind of foolish to act like it wouldn't happen. Right. Satan wants to destroy friendships. He wants to destroy marriages. He wants to destroy churches. He wants to destroy Christianity. I'm just telling you, I know that that's a reality. It happens. But there are also a lot of positive things. <laughs> Amen? Yeah. There's a, po a lot of positive things. And that's what we're going to look at today. He has went from the negative, be careful of these things, and we're going to get into the positive of these things. So again, look at the negative there. Verse number 24. The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which soweth good seed in his field, but while he slept, the enemy came. Negative, right? Verse number 25, but while he slept, the enemy came. That's a negative value. It's not worth anything. It's negative. Verse number 31. The kingdom of heaven is likened unto, we see the, we see the mustard seed. That's abnormal growth. Negative value. That's not going to be good, right? Look at verse 33. The, the kingdom of heaven is like... Leaven, amen, that's abnormal growth on the inside, and that's negative value. But now we come to verse number 44, and the Bible says the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure. Anybody like treasure? Yeah. I like treasure, <laughs> amen. Sure. I mean, it's kind of obvious, it's treasure. <laughs> Hello, Captain Obvious, we like treasure, we should. So the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field. Look at verse number 45. The kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls. Anybody like pearls? Sure, and, and if I didn't like them, if I was a merchant man, I'd really like them because I now I have something to sell. It's going to be worth something. Amen? Yeah. I like it. Why? I can sell those and have treasure. I'm just telling them. I'm thinking, I'm thinking new barbecue. Uh, <laughs> come on. What's treasure for me may not be treasure for you, but what it produces is definitely treasure. That's a whole other. Okay, move on. All right. So we, let's define treasure. I believe we all think it's a good thing. We all have an idea of what it is. And I'm not talking about pirate's treasure. I'm talking about true treasure to someone. Treasure would be this. The Webster's 1828 Dictionary says this. Something very much valued. Hello, yes, of course. That would be, that would be an idea of treasure. It says this also. To hoard, to collect, to reposit, either money or things for future use. Yeah. Amen. That's what a treasure is. Amen? I want to use it in the future. Yeah. To lay up as to treasure gold, silver, usually with a, amen, uh, a great quantity. Great quantity is usually something that would, would be, mean a treasure of collecting for future use. Treasure. I hope you're thinking of context already while we're getting into this. Treasure. Treasure for, now pearls the Webster's 1828 Dictionary says, says this, pearls which are round, nearly round, of fine luster, luster, a high esteemed, uh, or excuse me, are highly esteemed as jewels, and at one time compared in the value with precious stones. 
think I've heard that in the Bible before. Anybody else? Precious stones? Hence, figuratively, something resembling a pearl would be something of that's very precious. Pearl. So again, look at our context. We have a treasure, and we understand what treasure is, but then we also have to look at our other hand, and who found that treasure? It was a working man. I'm just telling you, when I think of treasure and coming into something great, if I'm a working man, treasure is like, Woo! I'm not working anymore. Yeah. Right, come on. It's treasure. Right. I'm not I'm not thinking, okay, I got a treasure. I'm gonna go get a job farming. Right? I don't believe that's what he's teaching us here. It's treasure to a working man uh, is a is a big deal. How do you know it's a working man? Because he doesn't own the field that he's in. He doesn't. He doesn't own it here. But he buys it. <laughs> right? Yeah. So he's working. He found something in the field that he wants. So we're thinking of a working man here and a treasure to a working man. Listen, treasure to somebody who has treasure is kind of like just more treasure. But treasure to a working man, whoo, that's a big deal. I want some of that, don't you? Right. I'm just telling you, if you know where some treasure is, let me know, right? I'll go buy that field. I'll buy it out before someone else does. I'm uh, I remember that uh, watching a documentary on, on Disney, and I don't really much care for Disney anymore and some of the things they're doing. Uh, I'm not against a good movie. But I remember that they said that Disney tried to buy the, the place to build Disneyland or Disney World, one of the two, but they didn't let them know who, who was buying it because they're going to jack up the price, right? Amen. And if I had, if, if you were trying to buy my house, I'd, I'd sell it to you at a normal price, right? But if, 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 if somebody who had some treasure already was trying to come in and buy it, I'd jack up the price. Well, that's not right, Pastor. I know, but I'm, I'm thinking they got treasure. We can both have treasure. <laughs> right? Come on. We can have a good time in, in, in the Word of God. <coughs> treasure to a working man. Why are you making such a big deal out of that? Because he hid it. He didn't want anyone else to know about it, but he hid it. And then I think of pearls to a merchant man. Now, a merchant man is someone who traffic or carries... Uh, on trade, pearls would be a great value to him. Maybe it, even if he didn't like it himself, it would be something good for his business. Right. So it would work on the job there. So pearls would be of a great value to him. Anybody watching that show? Um, um, what is that? What is that? Where they? It's on. I can't remember what's on, but they they pawn pawn stars or whatever. You have yeah. see anybody comes in with something pretty awesome, right? And they're like. That's great, i got to have that, right? I know people who would buy that. So we, we see some things there that would be really awesome. Uh, as we think of pearls, would be of great value to a merchant man, somebody who's working, all right? So pearls, can we say to us, would be pretty important. It would be. So they would have some, can we say it this way, they would have value. Treasure has value to us. Pearls would have values to us. How much value will treasure the work here? Uh, was worth so much in verse number 44 we see that this man he hid it I, i'm just telling you this is treasure right Amen. there's about a hundred of them out there Pastor. this is treasure stay with me what do you got nothing right anybody ever see the little kids they grab something you say what do you got first thing they're gonna do is run right <laughs> what do you got there well, they think it's of value, yeah. right? They think it's of value. So, as we think of treasure to a working man, what do you got there? Nothing. Why did you miss work today? Mm -hmm. We don't want him to know about it. Why? Because it's important to us. It's valuable. Right. It was valuable to him. Uh, uh, so valuable that he, I can just see this guy. Nobody's seen it, right? It's worth something. It's a value there. Listen, and it's not like it was bad value. Look at verse number 44. And for joy. And he's happy about what he found. Woo! It's treasure. He's happy. For joy thereof goeth and selleth. Now listen, he didn't go and sell a few things. Hey, right, stay with me. He didn't like go and see, what do I have left over here? I'll sell some of this stuff. This was so important. That he sold the farm. Are you, are you with me? It says here, he sold, verse 44, selleth all that he had. Yeah. And buyeth the field. 
But it didn't say the treasure was the field. It said the treasure was in the field. Hmm. He sold everything and bought the whole field. Yeah. It's so important he wanted all of it. The whole field. So now this man has, when he sells all that he has, he doesn't have a house anymore. He doesn't have anything. All he has is that field that he bought. That is dedication. Yeah. Is it not? That that is that is worth something to sell all that he has for that field. But wait a minute. He wasn't upset. He joyfully sold all that he had. I'm just telling you, wouldn't you think you'd be a little odd? The pastor just sold his house, his car. He just sold, I mean, he doesn't have anything anymore. He just sold it all. He, all he's got is a shirt on his back. We've heard those things said before. Mm -hmm. And he bought a field, let's say it's a couple miles outside of town. Right now, you all are smarter than that. You'd be like, what's in the field? <laughs> right? Yeah. There's yeah. something there. I know my pastor, he may, he may be a little different duck. Come on, and so are you. <laughs> Come on now. But there's something. There's something to this. There's right. a reason why he's doing what he's doing. Yep. I want to check out the field. Amen? Yeah. Let's, let's look in the field. Let's find out what, what is there. What is so important that a man would sell out everything and buy a field? Doesn't make any sense. Unless there's treasure. Hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. He didn't call him a foolish man. And then he hid it. Hid it. If you're hidden it, you're protecting, protecting it. Now remember verse number 38. Look, look at, look at um, chapter 13, verse 38. The field is the world, and the field is the world. The good seed are the children of the king, and the tares are the children of the wicked one. If I'm hiding it, am I hiding it because I want to share it with Brother Matt? Or am I hiding it to keep it away from somebody who's wicked and try to steal it from me? Sure, I'm hiding it. Why? Because I don't want anybody coming along that would steal this from me loose. I don't want anybody that's going to come along and, and mess up something in my, mess up this treasure. I want to make sure that it's, that it's protected. And I'm just, whoo, no one's looking. I've got this all, this all done. I'm selling out and I'm doing that. And I'm joyful about doing that. And I'm selling all that I have so I understand the worth of it. It's not, it's not like I didn't know what it was worth. I sold out for it. Yeah. So I understand the worth. This man here, he understands that what he has of his own is not of greater value than the treasure that is in the field. Are you with me? Nothing he has is worth more than what is in the field. Nothing. Not the job, not his stuff, not the house, not the car, not the family, not anything. How do you know? He sold out everything and he was joyful about it. So whatever it was in that field was much greater than anything that he has. Much greater. Wow. Then he buys the field. Why? Because in the field is where he found the treasure. Hold your fingers in your Bible. Stay in Matthew. Go back to chapter 6. chapter 6, look verse 19. Jesus says to his disciples, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth. Come on now. Don't act like we don't see this. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break in 
through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures where? In heaven. Where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. This man sold out everything because nothing else was going to take his heart away from the treasure that he found in the field. Hmm. Pearls. Well, they're worth something also. Verse 4, 46, he said, one pearl, come on, one, just one, one pearl of great price, it says right there in verse number 46. Back in our chapter 13, verse 46, 46, we also see the words of this, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Bought what? The pearl. Look at that, verse number 46. Who, when he had found one pearl of great pride, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Now, wait a minute. That's not the field. At least the field could produce something, right? This is just a pearl. One. He put it all on the line for one. Hey, all, everything for one. One. Okay, Pastor, I understand what one is. <laughs> no, I don't think you do. Hmm. I, I don't think I do. This man did the same thing. This man did the same thing as the man that sold out for the treasure. Both of these sold out for what they have found. They found it. Hey, hey. They found it. The word worth protecting. The word selling out for both of these men sold out for it. Let me go a step further. Both of these men were willing to sacrifice everything to secure what they had found. Everything. What is the worth? What is worth any sacrifice? What is worth anything? treasure in the fields and the pearls to be obtained. Listen to me, listen to me well. God's field has hidden treasure in it. sell out. There is nothing in these fridge texts. No matter what we do. That is worth more. It's worth selling out for. It's worth it. Is it easy?
try to offer me something to compromise. We're looking for leadership, my job said. And I was already in leadership. And I've, you've heard me give this testimony before. What he's trying to do, introduce a tariff that's going to be as much value mm -hmm. to me as what this field would have been. Tear, when it opened up, it had not been the same value. In the end, I stood before God yep. and regretted it. Regretted it. Can I say it this way? There's a real joy when we figure it out. There's a real joy when we figure it out. What's well, really worth something? Where your real treasures are found. Where real pearls are found. There are too many today hunting for buried treasure in Satan's fields. Kids. Yeah, have your job. Go to your job. But your job's not, it's not the treasure. We need to witness to those at the job. Why? Because there's pearls there. Yeah. And it's worth selling out for. I don't know what God's calling different people in here into. Maybe there's someone here that's supposed to be a pastor. Maybe there's someone here that's supposed to be a missionary. Maybe there's someone here that's just supposed to be a faithful servant to God at Lighthouse Baptist Church. Whatever Satan's offered you to keep you away, it's not it, the worth of it is not more than what God's given you. What's it worth? Sold out Christians. There are pearls all over God's field. You know, you'll understand who you're really working for, which is God. You'll find something. When you do, sell out. Sell out, it's worth it. I think of God's church. I remember when I first started going to Faith Baptist Church, my pastor, uh, Don Rice, they knocked on our door, the church did, and then I got involved in church there, and you know what I found out? This is treasure. Lots of pearls in there. Are they, are some of them honorary pearls? <laughs> you can't, you can't, I'm just telling you, you can't beat it. What do you, what do you think of your church? Mm -hmm. It's a great value to me. No, it's a great value to me. Listen, you didn't have to wonder how these, these other ones, this merchant man, and then the one that, that, that found it, found, was working the field, found the treasure. You don't, you don't have to wonder how they feel. You knew. Right. They sold out for it. Amen. I'm just telling you, you know they changed some things. They they sold out everything. It was worth it was worth the sacrifice. Is your church worth the sacrifice for you? Is 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 God's field, God's worth worth the sacrifice to you? I'm just telling you, there's real joy when you figure this out. So many people are, are, are working in Satan's field and they're working in the world's fields. Come on, and, and, and it only offers fool's gold. Fake pearls. They're worth nothing. Right. The world's offers are there, but they're to keep you out of God's fields. Listen, when we figure that out, I'd be pretty upset if I sold out everything when I stand before God and the angels come and come on, we see it in our text there, and I figure out that I've wasted my life for fool's gold, that I've wasted my life for, for pearls that were not really pearls, they're contaminated, they're, they, were, they were not right, I'd be a little upset, wouldn't you? Yeah. I'm just telling you, what God wants is not the negative, God is telling you that there's treasure in His field. Amen. There's treasure there, and it's waiting for you. There are pearls there waiting for you. He didn't say He wouldn't give it to you, He's just waiting for you to figure it out. Pearls. You see what happens? That's on the outside. You know what happens on the inside? We started, we may be a church member 
And before you know it, we let a little something into our life. And before I know it, our life is starting to look like we've sold out a little leaven got in there. And we start reproducing everything we have and getting everything that we want, even in the Christian life. Come on, before you know it, those things have contaminated us. And we're no longer as effective as we should be in the ministry. Ministry of what? Working in God's fields. Start growing abnormally. A Christian's supposed to look like a Christian, are they not? Yeah. Before you know it, there's things in my life that would keep me away from God instead of and hindering my growth. As a matter of fact, it's kind of contaminating me. You see it? Ruining those pearls. I'm, I'm just telling you, God's trying to tell us that it's worth giving up that stuff for. He's not telling you not to work. Work. But don't let work take you out of God's field. Yep. God's field is everywhere you go. You go to work in the morning. There's pearls there. If you, if you understand that that's what you're supposed to be looking for. Listen, we can't be all... Listen, my field is Herper, Texas. Your field is Herper, Texas. How do you know? Because you are here. <laughs> Amen? <coughs> Missionaries, they're all over the places. We want to help them work in their field. Amen? But our field's here, and there are pearls all over. But even if there was just one, it's worth it. What if you were that one? One. It's worth it. Kingdom. There's, listen, there's not joy in the kingdom of heaven over worldly things. In Luke chapter number 15, verse 7, the Bible says, I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repented, more than nine, more, more over uh, ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. So he's saying here there's joy in heaven over one, one person that gets saved. There's not joy in heaven because you got the job promotion. There's right. not joy in heaven because you got the degree you think you need. There's joy in heaven over one sinner that repented, meaning this, you found a pearl. Someone got saved. A life was changed. Amen. So thankful for that. Glad for Brother Eric. He's he's on his lunch break and the church. Amen. Amen. So that's where he's going back to work. <laughs> Amen. I'm thankful. But there's joy in heaven over one sinner. Anybody get excited when, when you think somebody's going to come to the front and get saved? Yeah. That's real joy. That's worth selling out for. Amen. Amen. That's worth everything. In verse number 47 and 48, we see the responsibility to that work. Like the treasure and the pearls is not enough. <coughs> But there's a responsibility. Here's where reality sets in here. Verse number 47, we see the net. Do you see that? Now the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a net. So, look at verse 47. That was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind. Listen, I, I think of, um, in my office, I have a, um, my, my, I have, I have a, a couple green balls in there. And I have a boat that sits between them. When I was, I was really young, I was two three, four or something, I don't even remember. But my dad and my, my family and I, we lived in Oregon on the on the coast. We were in a little motel there. I was so young, I don't remember much about that. But I remember walking with my dad, and we were walking in the morning on the seashore, looking for seashells, I'm kidding. We were walking on the, we were walking there, and these, these green balls were coming. And I just thought they were cool. So my dad put a couple of dates on those, and, and I have them in my office now, my dad's long away but those come out of nets they throw those nets out and they, uh, they, they they circle the boats and they let these nets circle up and those glass balls hold the nets up to where you can drag them back in and every once in a while those balls would come out and go onto the shore but what are they hunting for a draw it kind of sounds like what Jesus told Throw your nets out for a draw. And remember, he only threw one, and it was so full it broke and lost some fish. And what value was that 
to a fisherman. All yeah. kinds of people. He didn't say just Calvinist, did he? Bowie? No. He said red, brown, yellow, black, and white. They are precious to me. All of them. All sizes, all ages, all races. The kingdom of heaven will have all of them there. Verse 48, which when it was full, they drew into the shore and sat down and gathered the good into the vessels, but cast the bad away, those tares, get rid of them, keep them good. So it's, it really is simple theology, typology here. It says the net is, is the sown word of God, is it not? It's what we've been talking about in our text. It's that gospel, and, and it's in God's field. And praise the Lord for those that will get saved, amen, their pearls to the Lord. And, and they're gathered of all races and people there. But the bad guests, they're cast away. We understand that. But the reality are, there are so many out there that still in our day need to be reached. We are still having people saved in our day for those that are willing to sacrifice and go get them. Verse 49 and 50. Look at verse number 49 and 50. Chapter 13, 49 and 50. The Bible says these words. So it shall be at the end of the world. Here's the reality check. Jesus Christ is telling his disciples, he's telling us today, so it will be at the end of the world. The angel shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Meaning at the end of the world, there'll be some headed for heaven and there'll be some headed for hell. That's just the way it is. These are not stories. <clears throat> These are trying to teach us souls are on the line there will be good and there will be bad, but our job is to get after reaching them. Amen? In the Lord's field, we're to cast our nets as Peter was supposed to, was supposed to do there. Amen? Not just one, but sell out and, sell, and throw them both. However nets you have, how many opportunities you have to reach somebody, you need to sell out and throw it out there. Try to get a hold of them. Listen, their worth is worth protecting yourself and hiding, uh, hiding yourself to, to reach others so you're not contaminated and and not able to reach those pearls. It's worth all the sacrifice that you that you make. It's worth it all. Because in the end, you're going to stand before Jesus Christ. And he's going to say, well, either well done. Or you're going to be a castaway. One who cheated through their life. Contaminated. Not worth anything. Well, I don't want that. I don't want to be embarrassed when I stand before the Lord. Yeah. I want to hear, well done. I want there to be joy. Amen. Joy. Sure, there will be some bad. But there will also be many keepers. Many keepers. Understand. Listen to me. Understand the kingdom of heaven is coming. So Jesus concludes with his disciples here. He's concluding with us also. Look at verse 51. Jesus saith unto them, his disciples, have you understood all these things? What did they say? Yea, Lord. Hmm. How do you know it was true? Well, we have the Bible. We can see what happens later. Did Peter sell out? Yeah. Yeah. Did Paul sell out? Yeah. James, John, mm -hmm. Stephen, did they sell out? song that I love to listen to, and I believe Glory Mom sings it. The call is still the same. The fields are still there. Why? Because Christ has not returned yet. Right. So let me ask you a question as we see here. Do you understand? He says here in verse 52, Therefore, every scribe with his instructed unto the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man and a householder which bring forth of his treasure new things new and old. So a scribe would instruct, and he is instructed by the word of God. He sees the commands. 
He sees the opportunities to produce fruit. He's telling the Jew here also not to be so wrapped up in the past that he's ignorant of the present. But you and I, we're instructed too, aren't we? Why? We have to listen. We have the word of God. Amen. We've been instructed. Amen. Yeah. What God is doing here is He's, he's reminding of a, 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 He's reminding us of our responsibility. Not to be so wrapped up in our past or in anything that would stop us from producing fruit. These examples, these parables are, are for our understanding, instructing us for the kingdom. And it demonstrates to us the responsibility of for servants. There's value in serving God. There's also sacrifice. Christ does not. He does not say there's not. He's no. They sacrificed all. I've never met anybody sacrifice all. No, that, that's a lot. You may remember the Corleys that came through here. How much do they let you on a plane with? Anybody know? How much? And they're going there for no return. Mm -hmm. They're sacrificing all. True. Going to a place where they're going to backpack up into the mountains and try to reach people. Why? Because there's pearls up there. And it's worth selling out for. <laughs> God may have called you to Nepal. I don't know. Maybe God's called you somewhere else. I don't know. But I know this. God's called us all to Hereford. Right. Amen. And there are pearls in this field. Amen. And they're still out there. It may be hiding, but if you'll look, you can find them. Yep. Amen. Amen. They're there. They are there. There's many here today. I'm thankful that we found them. Amen. Yep. I'm thankful that God has shown that to us. I'm thankful. There, there's more. Listen, we had what, 40 something in church this morning, and we had some families out. Amen. There's more. There's more. I want more. Why? Because it's treasure, and I'm laying it up. How about you? Amen. We want them for future use. I'm look. The more pearls, the better for future use. Listen, it, it's going to cost us, though. Yeah. You're going to have to sell out. You're just going to have to. If it's worth it to you, like it was worth it to Jesus Christ and Paul and so many others, if it's worth it to you, then let's sell out. Let's cast our nets. Let's, let's be there for soul winning. Come on. Yeah. Let's be there in God's field. Let's look where we're at. Let's look at Walmart. Hey, let's look at some other places. Let's look at places that we work. Let's look at what's going on as soon as we walk out those doors. There's pearls everywhere. Might have to look a little harder at night, but we can find them, can we not? Yeah. I'm looking for them. Are you? Do you understand? That's what Jesus Christ is telling his disciples. Do you understand what's going on? Souls are on the line and treasures are there. He's given us time to go get them. We just got to go get them. Amen. We're selling out for it. It's worth everything. You will never give up more than what God asked you to. And you'll never get up more. Give up more than what the return will be. Hmm. Yeah. Give you a couple of scriptures here and we're done. In 1 Corinthians chapter number 9, 19 through 27, Paul said this, who has given up everything. He said, For I thought to be free from all men, yet have I made myself a servant unto all, that I might gain the more. And unto the Jews I became a Jew, that I might gain the Jews. And to them that are under the law, as under the law, I might gain them that are under the law. To them are without the law, as without the law, being without the law to God, but under the law to Christ, I might gain them with that without the law, which are you and I, by the way. Uh, to the weak became I weak, that I might gain the weak. I made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. He's after pearls. Yep. Amen. He's willing to be weak to reach the weak. He's willing to be knowledgeable to reach the Jews. He's willing to be whatever it is to reach whoever it is. He, say that, he says this in verse 23. I do, and this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be a partaker, therefore, with you. Reaching others. He says, know ye not that they which run a race shall run all, but one receiveth the prize, so run that he may obtain 
And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do, do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. For therefore so run, not as un uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that breathes the air, but I keep my but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest by any means, when I have preached to others, I might should there should be a castaway. He's saying this, I'm not letting leaven in. I'm keeping my body under subjection, meaning I'm not letting those other things keep me away from the prize. Yeah. Amen. It happens to us, doesn't it? Yeah. In Matthew 16, Jesus Christ says this himself in verse number 24. And Jesus said unto his disciples, If any man come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whosoever shall save his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what shall it profit if, if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in glory of his Father with his angels. And then he shall reward every man according to his works with those pearls. Verily I say unto you, there will be some standing here that shall not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The kingdom is not here yet. It's coming. Christ died for it. Hmm. Paul died for it. Jesus says we have to die to ourselves to gain the pearls. So I'm finished with this last statement. 